Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Nick from Part-Time Pilot. Part-Time Pilot specializes in helping you achieve your childhood dreams of becoming a pilot. Uh, and we do that through online courses. So if you haven't checked out our site, go to parttimepilot.com and check out our uh, courses and our great deals. Um, so today's video we're gonna be on is gonna be on the transponder. Uh, what we're gonna go over is the basic functionality of a basic transponder. Uh, if you fly with a different transponder, do me a favor and comment below. Tell me what kind of transponder you fly with. Uh, this, this right here is just the very basic transponder so we can get the, the basics. So we'll go over the functionality. Then we'll go over the different modes, what they mean, um, including ADS-B. Uh, so this is plus ADS-B. And then we're going to talk about when these are required, both transponder and ADS-B uh, for private pilots. So you know when they're uh, required, what the modes mean, and the basic functionality. Uh, so let's get to it. All right. So right here, you just have in this uh, in this transponder, you just have a basic mode switch. So it's got off, which powers the unit off. It's got a standby, which gives uh, power to the unit, but it's not transponding. It's not broadcasting out of the transponder antenna. Uh, and then you got on, which uh, turns on your mode 3A operation for this one. Um, and then alt turns on mode 3C, which is automatic altitude reporting. That's why it's ALT. So, um, and again, we'll get to the modes here in a second. Uh, then you have the numbers. So these are what you use to change your squat code right here. Uh, and then you have an enter. So how these old ones work is you press... Uh, the first digit zero for here and then you would press enter to and then it would go to the next digit and then so you would enter four and then press enter again and then it would go to the next digit so you got to press it each time um, and enter it in there uh, then you have a vfr quick button this is a shortcut button it quickly changes your squat code here to the vfr squat code which is one two zero zero all right uh, then we have ident a quick ident button so uh, allows pilot to identify easily and quickly to ATC. So this should only be used if you're asked and directed to by ATC. They'll tell you to ident. Um, and that is usually done when they can't find you on their screen. And what that does is it enlarges your aircraft on their screen so that they can find you quickly. All right, and then it, uh, your tail number will be entered here. Uh, we'll just show you there. On uh, and Then you have the, the squat code as we talked about. And then we got a flight level or altitude so that is flight level of 085, which is 8,500 8, feet. Um, and then this has a function button as well. So that's only used for setup and configuration. So you don't really have to worry about that unless you're a mechanic. All right, now let's get to uh, the modes. So transponder modes. When you call up flight following ATC, they will ask you to squawk a specific four digit code on your transponder. Uh, this is when you'll change your transponder code from the VFR standard 1200. Uh, to a code assigned to you by ATC. Uh, be sure to avoid inadvertent selection. So when you do, when you do this, when you're at 1200, and let's say uh, squawk, I don't know, 8571. So you would have to go, you know, past essentially these numbers. So you want to make sure to avoid selection of these codes, even if just for a minute, because they are the emergency codes, which will trip, you know, some emergency services possibly. So that's kind of why the transponders, they make you uh, do it one digit at a time so that you can avoid pressing those. Uh, once you enter the code in your transponder, ATC will be able to locate your code on their screens and be able to provide you with radar navigation and traffic separation services. So that's how they, they find you on their screen. Uh, after services are ended, the pilot should put your code back to, to 1200. So ATC says, all right, radar service terminated. Uh, that that gives you the go ahead to put this back to one, two, zero, zero. All right. So the first mode is mode a mode a transmits uh, aircraft position with a four digit squat code to ATC, just as we've been talking about, uh, mode C transmits the aircraft position, uh, four digit squat code and your aircraft's altitude rounded to the nearest 100 feet. Uh, mode C transponders sometimes referred to as encoding altimeter transponders because they report the altitude by encoding the altimeter value. So they take the, the value of your altitude that your aircraft has and they encode it into a, a signal that they broadcast out your transponder antenna along with the signal for your four digit code and your position. 
and then ATC receives that and they decode that into an altitude value. And then you have mode S, uh, which is designed to function with traffic alert and traffic and collision avoidance systems, or TCAS, and, uh, and traffic information systems, TIS. Uh, mode S transmits your aircraft's call sign or transponder's permanent unit code, so a unique identifier, uh, your position, and altitude. And then it's another encoding altimeter because it reports the altitude, again, by encoding the altitude value. And then finally, uh, another, I guess you could call it a mode, although it's a separate unit. Uh, sometime, you know, and a lot of things are they're combined into the same unit on your aircraft, ADS-B and, and uh, regular transponders. But let's just consider it a different mode because it is new uh, as of January 1st, 2020, I believe. Essentially, ADS-B, and I didn't list it all here, but essentially ADS-B transmits a lot more information about your aircraft. Um, so in some of the, the, the most used ones are aircraft position, identification, altitude, and velocity. So, and this is velocity in three dimensions um, so that ATC can know exactly, you know, how fast you're descending uh, or climbing and which direction you're traveling and at which speed you're accelerating. So um, that's the, the, the main purpose of ADS-B. All right, so let's get into the requirements. When do you need a transponder? When do you need ADS-B, mode C, all that stuff? All right, so the FAA requires aircraft to be equipped with an operable mode C transponder. Mode C, so remember that's uh, re reports uh, encoding altimeter. Uh, so it reports altitude and ADS-B out when in class A, B, or C airspace. So let's uh, show this visually. So class A is up here above 18,000 feet. You have uh, class C here, and then we have a class B. So we mode C and ADS-B out, both required when in those airspaces. So this aircraft right here is under 18,000 feet, and it's not in class B or C, so it would not require transponder or ADS-B. Okay, the next situation where uh, these are required, uh, above class B, so above class Bravo and above class Charlie airspace until 10,000 feet MSO. So here's our aircraft here. We're above 10,000 feet MSO here and we're below 18,000 feet. So again, and we're not in class uh, C, uh, we're not in class B and we're not in class A. Um, but if we were above class C and below 10,000 feet in this little box here or above class B, uh, that's what that requirement is talking about. And although though our aircraft is above this class Bravo right here, it's above 10,000 feet, um, and that requirement is only up to 10,000 feet. All right, the next one, uh, within class Echo, class E airspace, at or above 10,000 feet MSL, except in that airspace below 2,500 feet AGL. All right, so let's look at it. This is kind of a confusing one. Let's look at it conceptually. All right, so um, class E, 10,000 feet above. So uh, we can safely assume that if we're not in class C, we're not in class B, we're not in class A, that we're in class E. And when we're above 10,000 feet, which our aircraft is, then mode Z and ADS-B is required. All right, so this, uh, this is why our aircraft is transmitting here, as you can see with these little transmit symbols. Um, but the one caveat to this is if you are in, are, if you're under 2,500 feet AGL, so under this dashed line, then it is not required. So even if you go up mountains, right? So the, the elevation is here, so it's only 2,005 feet, 2,500 feet above the elevation. So if you were to fly over the mountains like this, um, in this area, it would not be required. Um, so just... Uh, you know, on a cross-country flight, you're not going to care about that. You're probably going to be uh, ha having those on the whole time. But if you were to be operating out of an airport, you know, up here in the mountains and just, you know, doing pattern work in a non-towered airport or something, then it would not be required. All right, the next one is within 30 nautical miles of a Class Bravo airspace primary airport. Uh, 
when below 10,000 feet MSL. Uh, we call this a mode C veil. So, okay, so class B, we're under 10,000 feet and we're within 30 miles. So 30 miles of that primary airport. I can't draw my M, but so the 30 miles, uh, that's the radius. So um, that's the veil, 30 miles all the way around. If we are within that uh, up to 10,000 feet, uh, then we require mode C and ADS-B. So this aircraft right here, we're not, um, but we are in the class E airspace. So we already talked about that, that we'll need, we'll need these. Okay, now the next one is into, within, or across the US Air Defense Identification Zone, or ADES. Um, this one, uh, as a general aviation pilot, you probably won't come across, but it's good to know, into, within, or across the US ADES. Um, so here I just sort of drew a little dash blue line over here and that's the Addy. So if you are going into it, across it, or you're in it, so if you're over here somewhere or you're crossing into it, uh, you're going to need a mode C and ADS-B. All right, so now we're gonna get into some that are ADS-B out only. Uh, so not transponders with mode C, but just ADS-B out only. Uh, so within class E airspace over the Gulf of Mexico at and above 3000 feet MSL, within 12 nautical miles of the US coast. So if this is the Gulf, Gulf of Mexico over here, and we're within 12 nautical miles of the coast, um, and we're 3,000 feet MSL and above, um, so that would be you know probably about right here. So if we're in uh, this area right here, you know 12 nautical miles from the coast above the Gulf of Mexico, 3,000 feet or above, then we would require ADS-B. All right, now if your aircraft is equipped with operational ADS-B, then you are required to keep it in transmit mode at all times. So that's just a general rule for ADS-B. And then for flights above 18,000 feet in class A, airspace, the aircraft is required to be equipped with a 1090 ES ADS-B. All right, and then it, so that probably doesn't apply to general a aviation private pilots. So we want the, what's the requirement for below 18,000 feet MSL? So if you're flying below 18,000 feet and you're not in uh, class A, then you can have either a 1090 ES or a universal access transceiver or a UAT. Um, so if you're building your own aircraft or, or you're putting in an ADS-B, you know, you probably want uh, one of these to be safe, just go with 1090 ES, but, uh, if you're not gonna fly above 18,000 feet, which as general aviation, you're likely not to, um, then you can just go with the UAT. Okay, finally, uh, when not operating in an area that requires mode C, S, ADS B, the transponder should be set to mode A unless otherwise advised by ATC. This is just ATC trying to reduce the amount of information they have on their screen. So they don't want you blasting them with velocity information, altitude information, all this stuff, unless they ask you to do that. So unless you're, so if you're not in an area where it's required and you haven't been asked, then just keep it in mode A. Okay, that has been uh, the requirements, uh, the basic functionality, and uh, a little bit about the modes in the background of what they are. Uh, I hope you liked the video. If you have any questions, please comment below uh, and stay tuned, you know, click uh, give us a like. It helps us out a lot. And also subscribe because we'll be coming out with more videos. Um, and then we have a bunch of good information on our Instagram at part period time period pilot. Check that out. Um, literally the whole, like all our posts are just uh, good to flip through and test your knowledge. Um, so go ahead and do that. And then check out our courses online at parttimepilot.com. Lifetime access. Still have not had anyone not past their FA written. So uh, we know they're good and uh, you can check out the reviews on there as well. Uh, so check it out. Thanks guys.